Mayor, thank you for joining us. The professor said you called him, and I believe it was last Monday, and apologized. Uh, we apologize when there, somebody did something wrong. Did the police department do something wrong in this case? You know, the incident of July 16th was an unfortunate incident, and I'm not here to talk about what, whether right or wrong happened, but how do we move forward? And I did call Professor Gates, and I've actually talked to Sergeant James Crowley and said to both of them, how are you, how are your families? It, and both men expressed an interest in a, in a sincere interest to be at the table to talk about this issue and to see how we can move this conversation forward and talk about how we make Cambridge the city that we feel that it is that it needs to be which is proactive and progressive if you need if you need to make it the city it needs to be again that underscores the point that something's missing or something needs to be improved what is that something well, it, when I say it, the city that it needs to be, I put that in the context of we really understand that we have to be responsible to be an affirming city for all citizens. So it's not so much that there's something wrong. It's also about what can we do to make sure that we're better. As again, a city of fairness. Something like this obviously can expose some tough emotions. Race is always a very difficult subject. And you could see that your police union felt offended and resentful of what the president said. I want you to listen to Sergeant Dennis O'Connor. He's the president of the Cambridge Police Officers. This is responding to the president's remark that one of his officers acted, quote, stupidly. Whatever may be the history, the supervisors and the patrol officers of the Cambridge Police Department deeply resent the implication and reject any suggestion that in this case or any other case, they have allowed a person's race to direct their activities. Do you agree with the union head there that his police department doesn't put race into how it performs? Well, I think the fact that they came together to stand with Sergeant James Crowley was an important, uh, important step in resp uh, responsibility of the, of the union. But the president has also called Sergeant James Crowley and, is in, and talked to him and invited him to come to the White House where they can, both gentlemen, can get together and talk. And when the president disclosed to the American people that he placed that phone call, it was in Friday in the White House, when clearly the White House felt the president's remarks at the news conference had only made the situation worse, not better. And the president came in trying to ratchet it back, to use the word some of his own aides have used. Let's listen to a little snippet of what the president said on Friday. Because uh, this has been ratcheting up, uh, and I obviously uh, helped to contribute ratcheting it up, uh, I want to make clear that in my choice of words, I think I unfortunately uh, then gave an impression uh, that I was maligning the Cambridge Police Department or Sergeant Crawley specifically. Uh, and I could have calibrated those words differently. Mayor, you're a mayor, he's the president, but a different layer, but it's still politics. It's still politics. I could have calibrated those words differently. Should the president just have said, I'm sorry? You know, I'm not going to make commentary about the president's remarks, but one of the things that has come out from this is, and you may remember from uh, Commissioner Haas's press, press uh, statement that at this point we're going to go forward. We're going to, he's going to convene a panel of experts, and I really respect our commissioner. I think he has done an enormous job to reach out to the community in general. But he's going to convene a panel of experts to look at the July 16th event. From that, there will be a report and some suggestions about what we can do to go forward. And I think that's where and what we must now do. Well, let's focus on that. The president says he hopes it's a teachable moment. Professor Gates has said that, as you noted. Sergeant Crowley has now said that. And you, the mayor of Cambridge, are saying that. You're an African-American mayor in a predominantly white city, 105,000 people, 67 percent white, 12 percent African-American, 14 percent Asian, and 6 percent Hispanic. So you face a challenge. You're leading a community in which you are a minority. I grew up across the river in Dorchester, Massachusetts in the okay. 1970s when forced busing was a big issue that divided the city of Boston, and it was a quite ugly time, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. Give me your assessment of race relations today and how we make this a teachable moment. You know, Cambridge is a part of the larger society, and race the matters of race and class have always been with us. One of the things that I admire about my city, what's important about our city, is we look at those issues. I see this as an opportunity for Cambridge to be America's classroom. And at, what 
we will do is we will unpack, if you will, the incidents of July 16th, and we will use that to work on how we can make our city an affirming city for all people. You're right. The issues of race and class, the president has said that, a number of scholars have said that, Professor Ogletree, we realize that. And we're not afraid to look at that issue. We're not afraid to look at that issue, take it up and say, what can we do to make sure all citizens in our city, regardless of their race, their gender, their social class, feel like they're a valued member of our city? Mayor E. Denise Simmons of Cambridge, Massachusetts, you have a lot on your hands, Madam Mayor. We wish you the best of luck. And maybe when the sergeant and the professor come to the White House for that beer, maybe you can accompany them. Perhaps so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mayor. Take care.